C'est bon ça, mon petit chou. Oh là 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 là. La corde. Il fait joujou le petit. Oh le vilain. C'est un bon chien ça. Hein Tu veux qu'on agite Qu'est-ce qu'il fait le petit Il creuse. Mon petit chou, il creuse. Qu'est-ce que c'est mon petit chien Oh, he's occupied with digging. He knows like he's a bit of a digger, he's spoken. Eh, 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 on la gasse pas. Eh hey! Ça va. Chut. Eh, hey. now he wants to have a look what he was digging at, eh Ça va, mon amour. Eh oui, on aime son chien. Yes, I don't know, it's moles. No, just, just, I don't know. Something's buried in there for them to... Il y a quelque chose, eh? Oh, j'ai chaud, I'm hot. Oh. Well, I was busy all night, wasn't I, with matters of consequences growing up, say? Um, reading interesting stuff. Gosh, that John Campbell, nurse, medic, doctor, whatever, that was so good encouraging us to get vaccines in a COVID period with all the statistics. He was such a down-to-earth talker. He's now with uh, Oliver Stone, I don't know what his name is. Oliver something or other, not Oliver Stone, he's a film director. Um, anyway, some Oliver, who's a, a sort of interviewer, saying that there's been cover-ups and that all these excess deaths that were put down to COVID are actually just lack of care generally because everybody was on holiday for two years and didn't get treatments well of course if they weren't eating animals they wouldn't need it so much but there were people with serious problems and a lot of excess deaths we're talking britain up in the top so I mean but britain is the most unhealthy nation in the whole of europe so there's no surprises that we had the highest excess deaths so during the covid period when the immune system was attacked by a new virus but campbell is pretty annoyed to say that so the vaccine has actually caused the deaths and sickness, especially heart problems. And I know that from talking just to a few locals that they didn't go for their third and or second even vaccines because they had palpitations. But I, we did hear occasionally of worse than that. So anyway, I watched the video with Oliver, whatever his name is, interview. And, um, you know, for a man who's always... Uh, towing the party line and wanting the best for the health service and the image and everything he's pretty disappointed the word disappointed is usually what lovers use um, when they're annoyed about something because it implies that you actually care about anything um anyway he's disappointed that uh, there's this sort of the big farmer especially were making money out of it and all these beginning with the letter m four letters for what must be some kind of art, um, artificial vaccines that they were using during COVID haven't been properly tested and we should avoid them like the plague because these, uh, you know, unknown effects on hearts and stuff, which is the bit I picked up on. He didn't mention hearts, but I am. Um, that will seem to be the one that people... Hey, we're going to play in a minute. Oh, so yeah, I came out to play with the dogs, not talk about what I was watching all in the night on YouTube. Right. Right, well, I, I was hot. That was another reason. I was just too... I came dressed up too much. Too dressed. Too dressed up. Dressed up and nowhere to go. There's a song about that too. There's a song about everything. Ah, oh, what's he seen over there? He's standing. Now, the French um, website's interesting. They say that an ancestor of the Staffy... Oh. ...is um, a setter breed. Oh. Who says, and they also say, first point, it's a good guard dog. Well, we've now got evidence of that. Something spooked him, and he's coming back for comfort to the big dog who's watching. What is it? Qu'est-ce que c'est, mon chien? That's just a siren, but there's something up there that spooked him, but it's not anything I can hear or smell or see. He's seen it, though. Yes, the French Kennel Club say that um, Staffy's ancestors, not just bulldogs... And in the case of, I found on British websites, um, the extinct white terrier. But um, now I have seen a, a typical 
posture of a staffie is to lift a paw, which is a sort of gird bait hunting um, dog stance. They lift their paw up when they're looking at something intensely. He, he's a bit... I don't know why, but he's watching the big dog. He's circling around him. Right, well, we're going to go there because you face your fears. You don't sit around. Right, I'm going to pick up the, the rope game. He's not... He played with that a bit earlier, but I didn't want to take too many pictures of that to frighten people. Anyway, we're going to go up there. Oh, I, I, oh, you want it now. Come on. Do you want the... No, no, you can have it after. You can have it again after. Come on. Marsha, Marsha. Marsha means walk. Right, we go. One doesn't spook and run. One advances cautiously. Well, with me behind the dogs always, of course. <laughs> I'm not the one to lead the pack when he cases off. But there's nothing dangerous. This is, this is Northern Europe, sanitised Britain, where you, haven't, you don't even allow badgers to survive in case they bite you or whatever. Oh, TB, they think badgers pass TB to the prisoner cows that they rape and kill the babies off for breast cancer causing milk. Yes, well, hormones in milk are so high level because they're meant to grow an animal to the size of a cow, you, you prats, humans. Just because you like something creamy, drink semen instead, I say. Oh. Well, if you like a salty taste, I like a bit of salt. Shh. Right, that's St Mary's Church. That's the dog. And they've played rope. A pulling game, this rope that I have from Eastern Europe, of course. None of the ropes in Britain, they sell. Um, that last more than five minutes with a dog like a Belgian Shepherd. Ha! Huh. Well, why that? Why is that? Because they they have a built-in obsolescence. It's commercial. They have to sell more. Oh now, now what? Now Falcon's woofing. What's he seen? Oh. Well, anyway, I'm going to read. No, no. What's he, why has he gone over there, Falcon? Oh, he's a bit of a sentinel. Oh, of course, the puppies follow him, but there's no danger. There's nothing out there. There's no wild boar. This isn't Lithuania. Why well, he's woofing? Do I have to go? No, I don't want to go. I want to go round the field. Woo! Well, he's deaf, of course, my dog. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, well, that's no good. I have to wave the stick, but I'm busy using it to walk. Yes, I brought my black one out. Suitable. Sarah, Sir Yang! It's nothing. Sir Yang! You can't hear me, you deaf bat, of course. Woo! I'll wave the camera. Hey! Woo! 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 That's it, he's heard. Something in the frequency of... Sava! Sava! You're all right. You're with me, aren't you? Yes. He's coming. Evian, Evian. He's coming, puppy. Oh, he does take his time. Right, well, we can continue our walk. He'll join us. Come on. Ali, on continue. Marsha, Marsha. You can join him if you want. Well, I want to walk around the edge where I'm not walking on the... Whatever seedlings, I don't know whether they've planted anything yet. I don't think so. It's too early. It's just rough grass that's coming up. It's not yet planted. It's cornfield anyway. And that's much later for planting. As I know, le maïs, in French, is corn. Oh, right, you want... No, no, no. Let's not play in the way it's too muddy. We played where it was grassy. Oh, la, la, he's coming. Yes, yes, you're waiting for him. Oh, la, la. Well, it's so mild. I didn't look on the thing, but... I, oh, it feels like five centigrade plus. Ça va, mon chien, ça va. Eh? Arrête! Ça va, tu? Fi! Don't tell him off. You know? Right, voila, there you go. Oh, never mind about the mud, eh? That's what washing machines are for, eh? Oh, well, I've played enough with it, so now you're bored with it, eh? Oh, well, of course, sniffing's a lot more interesting. Now, I've got to pick it up. I don't know, it's like being mother here, and I've never been a mother. It irritates me. Hey, can you, can you take that thing? No, no, not my bag, the rope, you prat. OK, right, well, we're not playing rope either, if you... Hey, I've got a handbag in one hand, and I'm not having that ripped. No, 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 do so long. Right. Okay. Okay, we know you can put... Okay, I'll put the handbag down, stupid woman. Uh, what a silly idea, holding a handbag. Oh, what? Yeah, well, 
I don't want to play this game, actually. Well, Falcon, can you get out of the way? Well, if you want the rope, take it. Yeah? No one gives you control, you take it. Well, you want petting instead. Oh, la, 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 la. Well, he's still wary of whatever was in the other field, but there's nothing. Yar yang, sir yang, wag your taily. Sava, right. Well, I have cooled down in this time. Where's that rope? Well, of course, dogs get all very much more alert in the early evening and then later evening. Oh, oh later evening. They're in full wolf mode, barking at moon or howling in case of falcon. He's a real howler, he is. Oh, at least he's put that down. I'll put it, that muddy thing, all over my shoulders. Yes, oh, vamos, yeah. Oh, those stupid old in my hand, because he saw it there. Oh, oh, dear, dear, dear. Now, that's what you call a proper rope. Built for East European dogs, not wimps like here. Oh, and that dog deserves this quality. Yes, I'm not having built in obsolescence dog toys. <sighs> tennis balls are actually very bad for dogs' teeth, real tennis balls. I'm not sure if the tennis ball imitation dog toy ones are, um, what do you call it, uh, without it, because the tennis balls have uh, chemicals on them that damage the teeth of dogs. It's obviously meant for the tennis balls to uh, not slip and everything to have a bit of grip on the, um, what do you call the thing? Tennis court, yeah. Well, well, anyway, I'm walking right round. Yes, so sod everyone else. Oh, oof, we're in Lavister. We don't come here too often. We certainly don't go in the field opposite. Um, because, well, not much, because of the pesticides. There was once a notice up there saying, keep your dogs off for a few days because we put pesticides. Well, <laughs> in pesticides, stay in the soil for 19 years in the case of glyphosate or big long name beginning with G and S's and fuss in them and, and anyway so and they've I know several dogs that have had heart issues and seizures there uh, so I stopped taking my dogs there even though it's a lovely place the ex-golf course yes Ali or Marsha no more rope game I've got it round my neck nope you're not having it <laughs> oh dear I'm talking about Luton Airport that's the trouble of living down south you drop your H's even more readily I've noticed that I did pick up some you, one tends to acclimatise, to become native. When I was in Birmingham, I probably... I, well, I could do a brummy slight intonation, um, which is apparently the worst accent in England to have if you want to get a job, apparently. The black country, Birm Birmingham. That's how you say Birmingham in uh, brummy. Birmingham. I'm from Birmingham. There you go. I can still do it. Yeah, yeah, I went to Aston, you see. Oh, yeah, and Birmingham itself. Yeah, both of them. I did both unis. Oh, yes. Oh, well, of course. Aston was much more convenient. It was in the dead centre. Of course, it was just after the... Oh, the pub bombings when they arrested six people that were falsely in prison. They just found some scapegoats from some IRA thing. Oh, and they did, never did find the bombers, of course. Well... It's, the, it's like round up the usual suspects issue problem. You can't rely they ever get anyone right. Um, yes, that was when I was asked in the centre and I worked because I was industrious at a, a pub round the corner called the Ben Johnson, which was next door to the Social Security office where all the guys who, and mostly guys, who hadn't got jobs when they got their benefits came in next door into the pub to spend it all. Oh, yes. Oh, well, the thing that made the most money in there, actually, was the fruit machine. Oh, yeah, the gambling fruit machine. Yeah, yeah never mind selling beer. And never mind... You don't see so many of them today, the fruit machines. Well, you do, probably. I just don't go to places so much where they are. They're not in the Grosvenor. Oh, don't think the Grosvenor would have a fruit machine. Oh, dear, no. Well, they probably make more money out of it, but they make... I think the money the Grosvenor make mostly is uh, for meals, like most pubs. Meals and um, the spa. Well, I must say, it is tops. It is the tops. Uh, they've got a sauna. The jacuzzi is just out of this world. And uh, I've spent many a time in there. I used to be a member when I was here, when I was younger. Then I got the dogs, of course, so doors close. And you can't, because you can't leave them alone that long. I used to spend a few hours in the evenings when I came back from work. Yeah, I'd get the train to, 
I was working at one time at Birmingham International. So I'd get the train from Chester and one awful day I had to ring up on someone else's mobile borrowed in the train because the train had to stop because it had sliced a cow in half that had wandered on the track. Well, that was unfortunate for the cow. But um, anyway, I got there, I think. Oh, I can't remember if I was working for 3i. Investors in industry, anyway. Investors in people was their motto and company uh, name because I, I mixed them up with another one. I worked for 3M, which is American, and they're into sort of technology things. Um, equipment, you know, hardware more than software. But... Uh, yes, anyway, where was I? What was I talking about? I don't know why I was talking about that now. Oh, I do love sunsets. Sunset and sunrises. Sunsets and sunrises. I don't go too far in that other field because of the noise of the traffic, which must be the um, the highway to, to Wrexham and that. Yes, that's what it is. That road, the other one on this side where that truck's going, is the Wrexham Road. It's been alleviated by all the traffic on by the years and years, decades ago. They built the bypass... Oh, what they call it a, a bypass. Yeah, they do call it a bypass. Yeah, highway, anyway, it's a highway. Which just means a fast road. Why do I know? Well, I'm not taking much video of the dog. Well, it, it is. It's showing how they're enjoying themselves. That's what the purpose of this video is. I was didn't show much rope pelaying because why not? I don't remember. I can't remember. Um, I was too hot. Ha, that's a good enough reason. Yes, they played a bit of rope. Uh, but then they got more into sniffing, and obviously he's not massively obsessed. You see, dogs, well, he, he loves them. I mean, huh, he'd play in the lounge, not stop, there's nothing, nothing to sniff there. But of course, out in the fields, it's an absolute paradise for dogs of sniff, sniff, sniff. You see, well, this is the area where he thought he could some, hear something and he woofed. Yes, ah, back to the French... I looked up about stuffies in the French show internet and, um... First point, they say, good guard dog. Well, I mean, that's the total opposite of what the British say about their own breed. Um, anyway, never mind about that. Any dog barks, I mean, you know, what more do you want? You can't do anything else, otherwise, you know, he gets arrested and things. And, um... And then they said, uh... It wasn't very good with other dogs, which is total bollocks. I was, anyway, and and um, what else did they say? Um, oh, yeah, I, that's why I've already said it. The, it. One of its ancestors, besides the bulldog, and they didn't mention the uh, extinct English white terrier, one of its ancestors was a setter breed dog, which I totally think is possible. But it's funny how no English website has ever mentioned setters. How did the French find out? Well, they have ways of finding out their surreptitious nation and mentality, the Latins. Oh, surreptitious. I love that. It's a nice big word for the day. I'm not sure it's totally appropriate to what I'm talking about, but it's good enough. It's long and has lots of S's in it. Oh, look at that sunset. This is lovely, actually. It's a lovely vista. You can just about make the Welsh hills out behind towards Mould. It's a funny name, Mould, for a lovely town and area. It's uh, to the left of Mould, Mould, well, if you're heading from south, from Chester, it's to the left. Of course, it's to the right if you're coming up to the, from the north. But um, to the, it's an area of outstanding natural beauty where they've got a pub called the Miner's Arms in... Goodness knows, I forget the names. But anyway, it's up in the hills. Oh, now I've stuck that in the mud, it can't come out. And um, the Miner's Arms, yes, is in one of the really picturesque village. That, that's a proper village up there. Mind you, I should imagine it's mostly second homers. That's why I'd never move there. Um, well, I don't believe in second homes, do I? It spoils places, makes them ghost towns. Then you get a load of prats with lawnmowers arriving. Oh, yeah, don't talk about lawnmowers. I really don't like those either. Oh, they're... Oh, dear. He's been a pest. Oh, you tell him. I'm too far away to deal with it now. He stopped. Oh, right, where was I? Yes, yeah, Staffy. I was talking about Staffies uh, as a breed. Yeah, so, yeah, they're actually classified... Um, if your lof, L-O-F, means uh, leave d'origine française, which if you're a registered pedigree, that's the word you need in English to mean that. If you're a pedigree, Staffy, no problem. You're just category two um, under the Dangerous Dogs Acts and stuff in France. You're not category one. 
Um, oh dear, Category 2 dogs in France have to wear muzzles in public. Well, Category 2 are basically the Category 1 dangerous, so-called dangerous dogs, that are not pedigrees. That are, that are, oh God, get, get it right, get it right. Um, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, if you're not a pedigree, you've got a bigger problem if you look like something dangerous in France. That's the, the principle of that, of their laws about dangerous dogs. And um, Germany, well, Staffies are classified as a dangerous breed. Full stop, for some reason, poor thing. Mind you, I bet you, because the Germans, they act a bit like a Europe. Europe. Every state in Germany has a different rules about dogs they have their own lists so i know that so you're it's a bit like it's, it's a like for heinig to staten like the united states it's a collection of of different lender they're called uh, regions in germany that and they all make their own rules and laws for many things which of course britain doesn't seem to realize one one size fits all in britain for their laws um but say it's a bit like yorkshire would have a dangerous dog list and then cheshire would have a different list and that's how they operate in Germany so you have to know where you, you know which, which sort of regional frontier you've gone through so I'm sure there are areas in Germany that possibly don't have the staffy as classified as dangerous well, of course the British are responsible for it getting classified as that in the first place nobody I mean, nobody else would have known anything about the problem of anything to do with staffies if the British had managed them better. Oh, well, they can't manage themselves, let alone their dog. Oh, God. Anyway, don't get me going on that. Um, oh, I've called off. I'm much happier now. It's lovely. It's about, uh, let me see on my cheap watch that my mother gave me, my favourite. Oh, it's five o'clock. We've been out about an hour. That's all right. Well, we've still got another hour to go. Oh, I could stay out all night in the night in weather like this. It's a bit of the noise I just don't like. But look at that sunset. It looks better. It looks more colourful on the screen, actually, than it is in real life. There you go. You could never get exact colours on the photography. It's a bit like art. Yes, you can never replicate nature fully. Yeah, this is uh, the field just across the way from the Grosvenor Gardens. We didn't go there because I said I think people might be a bit phased. Not that they're out in the garden. Of course, they're being total wimps. They're inside, lifting pints, getting tennis elbows and watching telly probably on a day like this. It's a very mild day. I can't remember if I saw the temperature. It doesn't matter. I would estimate it's three or four Celsius outside, yeah, which is warm. Um, and uh, it has been... Well, it's been one Celsius with the snow period and zero. It had to be zero to fit for it to freeze. But there's no real mess. It's slushy, mostly. I mean, look at it. You can tell. I'm not making it up, am I? Oh. Um, there we go. I think I've done a far too long video and it's getting dark. But it is pretty, isn't it? Oh, yes. Well, the sun sets at Nether's Audio much better than this, of course. Oh. But that's because I'm on top of a hill. Yes, well, the highest hills in Lithuania are 300 metres, and they call that the mountains, the highlands. Well, yes, well, the Scots would have a laugh about that. But, I mean, being Eastern Europe, you don't even want to be in the lowlands when the winter comes. You get to minus 30. Oh, what do you want? No, I'm not playing any more rope game. Um, Sava, marcha, marcha. That means walk. There you go. Right, um... Yes, yes, it goes to minus 30 in the winter months. Well, it's minus, it comes, goes down to zero. Hey! Ça va pas, eh? On va se, on va se calmer, là. On va se calmer. Ça va, mon cher. You're all right. On va se calmer. Right, well, listen, if you want the rope, I'll give it you. Hey? Tu veux la, tu veux ça? Rope? No, you're not bloody interested now. Typical. Huh? All right, well, I'm, cheese off. Now I've given, offered it. That's the end. I offer it once. Oh, it's now around my neck now. Yes, it is. Best place for it. Well, we've played it enough. We've played enough rope pulling. It's very good, that. It exercises muscles, strengthens muscles, uh, teaches bike control. Yes, yes. Because the animal learns hip. Can pull on ropes, not my arm. <laughs> That's the objective for me, anyway. Oh, yes, you know, not touch my gloves or arms. Right, well, that, where was I? 
Oh dear. Oh. Yes. Well, I think I'll stop the video now. There's lights on it, so some house or other. Right. Video done. Lavister Pulford. Her. Uh, oh, actually in Wales. Kimri, 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 Kimri. I is how, how you say Wales in Welsh. We've gone over the Pulford Bridge. So that the Pulford Brook is the frontier. So we're actually in Lavister behind some awful vets I don't actually go to anymore. They, they, they're now a chain, you see. They used to be independent. And, uh, well, I found things weren't quite what I wanted when they went as a chain. Well, the prices for starters went up. And um, the service, yes. I remember going in there. That's why, that's why and I stopped going. And I said, I just want some worming tablets. And I said the name. I think it was Millibax that treats lungworm. And uh, they said, you have to have... Um, a consultation. That's what they're all doing it. And it costs £45 a dog. And I said, well, that would have been like 90 quid for my two dogs. And I said, a consultation? What are you going to do? Stick your nose up. They've asked to see if they've got worms. I mean, you know, they're not doing a... There is a thing called a worm test. I used to have it done once a year, a long worm test. And, uh, but that was only £35 to have the test. But they weren't going to do the, the test. Yeah, they just call it a consultation. And I said, that's a rip-off. So 90 quid for just turning up for them to look at the dog and say, oh, maybe he has or he hasn't got worms, as if you can tell just by looking at it. And then uh, they weren't going to look up its arse, were they? Were they? And they, then, then you pay for the thing. They wouldn't sell me the med medication, yeah, unless I had the £90 consultation. So that was the end of them. That's why I said, what a rip-off. And the, they weren't the only vets doing it. Um, I think Pets at Home had a vet service at the time. Don't know if they've stopped doing it. And they, they wanted the same consultation before... Anyway, found it on the internet. I said... And they said, no, you won't find it on the internet. It's only by prescription. Sod it. You can find anything you want. And uh, even if they close the websites down. So I found a vet in Europe that was sold what I wanted. It's just the same thing as... Yeah, but they, they weren't into this. Uh, ah, they've improved the situation on the internet now. You can actually... Go online, register, and say you want a prescription for and describe the problem. And uh, that's what I did when she who shall not be named was ill. And I had to get some uh, some particular thing, which I don't want to remember. Di di no, 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 don't say it. Anyway, I can't remember. Don't talk about the, the word. Anyway, I got it for her. I, it was a medication that uh, you could easily get for humans, in fact, that treats malaria. But it treats... Uh, dogs for something as well anyway but i got it yeah and uh online but actually i'm in what do they call animal trust dogs is it animal trust yes up at ellesmere port and there's a they're a chain of what they call non, not for profit vets they do every consultation free so you only ever pay if they say you need a medication or or treatment or something so the, i actually like that because not that i ever abuse the system like some people probably do I mean, you know, we all know that, you know, little Johnny gets a snotty nose and mummy's down the doctor's pissing, uh, taking up, you know, people with hernias, bloody visits. And um, so people with dogs are pretend to be the same. You know, my dogs had the runs, can, you know, bring it to the vet. I mean, for God's sake, give it some rice bone and water and, and it'll purge. But anyway, unless it's poison, like chocolate. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, so yeah, the Animal Trust Ellesmere Port... Uh, Birkenhead, they've got one which I didn't realise in Wrexham, and they were going to open one at Landudno. They'll do well there. There's a lot of um, people there that uh, have they so retire lovely for retirement as well at Landudno. Um, they were going to open up there, so I went to I now go to them, and they do. Yeah, they, I did say to them whatever the worming was I did last time. It's about time now I did it. I do it about two times a year. Because the logic of that, even though they say you should do it monthly, which I used to, but I don't anymore, the logic of doing it twice a year is that the lung worm takes six months for the larva to grow into a full worm, which then destroys the heart of a dog. So if you kill the larva before it gets to six months, that means give any medication Yeah, every, every six months. So that, that will sort out no larva not turning into a lung worm. And... Uh, 
Yes, well, I, I mean, and let's not talk about Brevecto, because there's a lot of controversy about that, although I found it very effective. Unfortunately, Brevecto, which is a wormer and anti-flea uh, dog and parasite thing, um, is a substance which goes round the body in the bloodstream of the dog every three minutes. Now, can you imagine that sort of thing? That, I mean, you know, I, don't, <laughs> I do think it's pretty strong. That's why it's so effective. But there have been reports from individuals. Hey! Hey, individuals that uh, dogs have died or got ill from it. But you see, you can be s s uh, sensitive uh, to, to all sorts, yes. Well, that's all right. It's okay. He's all right. He's just mucking about. So, I think that's enough waffling here, eh? Oh, I mean, I'm just enjoying the sunset, me. And uh, expressing my thoughts about a couple of dog issues. Yeah, I think that's quite enough. You can't see the dogs anymore, especially mine. Well, they're both dark, actually. Ha, <laughs> ha, can't see them in the dark. Oh, I don't bother. I have got, I have got those luminous color, um, circles. They're very good, all reflective. I've got reflective coats, even. <laughs> you know, it takes like two minutes to put them on before going out, which is a long time in my impatient states. So when I'm wanting to go out, yeah, I'm not thinking, let's now fiddle around with reflective collars and coats. So... We tend to go out without that and without a torch. Yeah. <laughs> I've got so many torches saying, oh, they'll be useful when I go out as I do often in the dark. And I always forget to take them out with me. Hey, but no one can see me. Yeah, it's a better deterrent than anything else that. If someone can't see you in the dark, they're not going to come for you, are they? If you see a, a flashing light walking in a field, you know someone's over there and you can go for them. So they can't see me in the dark. Not that there's any danger to me, for heaven's sake. I'd frighten anyone off more than they could ever frighten me, I think. And that's not what I would like anyway. You don't want to frighten people because they can get turn like dogs and be aggressive. Anything that gets frightened gets defensive. Yes. Right. On that positive note, with a beautiful sunset to end on, I will.